Hello Tampa, it's Mayor Jane here again uh, for our Facebook Live. Thank you all for joining us uh, here. We have another very, very exciting show for you. Uh, before we get started with our guest, I just want to talk about uh, update and a, a couple of other things. So here in Hillsborough County, we have 372 confirmed cases of coronavirus, including um, 63 hospitalizations and unfortunately five uh, deaths at this time. Um, the COVID-19 testing, again, if you feel that you may have it and you're exhibiting the symptoms, you can call 812-272-5900, 813-272-5900, and you will be asked a series of questions, in essence triaged, and then if necessary, you'll be given a number or a prescription, and you will go to Raymond James Stadium and be given a, a test. And it's my understanding that the testing process that they have, I was just out there yesterday morning, uh, that they can complete it while you're still there. It takes about 15 minutes. So hopefully that is still the case, but they, they have collection kits left. So if you feel like you have the uh, virus and you're exhibiting those symptoms, make sure you call. Now, we, as, as we are all acutely aware, are facing a very, very difficult time in our community. And this is um, something that really is uncharted waters. You know, there's no playbook in how to address this. And as has been the history in our country, if, you know, one community faces some type of a crisis, the rest of the country comes in to assist and help them back up on their feet. Well, right now, this virus is going to affect every community throughout our United States. So we are going to come together as a community, what we always do, and help each other through this. So we are here for you. We're trying to bring you uh, information that you can use every single day. But I have to, once again, remind you and implore you to take those simple steps to avoid um, transmission of the COVID virus and also to avoid contracting it. And those are washing your hands, making sure you're disinfect disinfecting surfaces, and then also the six foot distancing. That is the, the one, actually all three of those are the steps that have been shown consistently to flatten that curve. And we all know what that means. That means less deaths in our area and less people that are gonna be affected and get sick from this virus. So let's make sure that we are all doing our part. We're taking our personal responsibility and, and flattening that curve down so that we can get through this together and we can get through this much, much faster. So now it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce my good friend, uh, Clara Reynolds. She is, um, she heads the Crisis Center, which is Crisis Center of Tampa Bay, which is an organization that I am very, very familiar with. Uh, my time at the uh, Tampa Police Department, uh, you provide so many incredible services for our community, and we will get into that. But as a police officer, you know, I was out there on a regular basis as are all law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, officers taking individuals out there that are in need of the incredible services that, uh, that the Crisis Center uh, provides. So the organization that uh, offers incredible support and healing to our community uh, is of course the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay. They are open year round. Uh, every day of the year, and they offer short-term crisis intervention, emotional support, and information on humane services that are available throughout Hillsborough County. They also help connect residents with key resources, including basic needs like food and shelter, rent and utility assistance, suicide intervention, and help for those facing abuse, and much, much more. So now they're helping us face uh, the hardships due to COVID-19. So Clara, thank you so much for being here today. 
and just give me a little bit of a background on the mission for those in our community mm -hmm. that aren't aren't aware of what the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay does. Well, first of all, thank you. It's a huge yeah. honor to be here today. <laughs> so thank you for including us. The Crisis Center of Tampa Bay has been in our community for over 40 years, and our mission is to ensure that no one in our community has to face a crisis alone. That word crisis can sometimes make people mm -hmm. uncomfortable. A crisis is simply a life's problem that needs a solution. And so 24 hours a day, seven days a week, individuals can call us utilizing very, very simple number 211. That number is available across the country. Uh, it was developed by the United Way in the 90s and anybody in the, any community can call 211 and get help and support during their time of need. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and um, you know, I've always been such a big supporter of, of the Crisis Center. And, you know, one of the things that I, I say, the beauty of the Crisis Center, are a lot of things in our lives that may just be a minor inconvenience. You know, the battery mm -hmm. goes dead in the car or, uh, you know, an unexpected illness can be a life-changing event for so many of our, our, our citizens. So I'm always so thankful for everything that you do. So if people aren't familiar with the 211 number, I know you said that that was uh, created by the United Way, but um, and it's 24 seven, but exactly what can, because a lot of people think that it's just if I'm in personal crisis, mm -hmm. you know, if contemplation of suicide or, mm -hmm. or mental health issues, that type, but it really goes so much further. So much further. If, if nothing else, think of us as the clearinghouse of all of the resources that are available in the community. Mm -hmm. Every community resource um, has a requirement to register with the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay. And right now with COVID-19, those resources are changing daily, sometimes hourly. Mm -hmm. So we are fielding all of those changes, all of those resources. And that's really why we encourage individuals that if they're looking for financial assistance, they're looking for food, they are overwhelmed and struggling. The easiest thing to do is to call 211 and let us work through whatever your issue or problem mm -hmm. is because it's different than Google. Sometimes you're just Googling a symptom because yeah. you don't even really know what the problem is. Sometimes the symptom is whatever's the crisis of the moment. Yeah. We can help folks figure out exactly what's going on so that we can get them to the appropriate services um, as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Now I know that you've always helped uh, veterans. You have a specific program for that and recently launched uh, a program to help first responders and uh, that was initiated in part by uh, a woman whose brother was a firefighter mm -hmm. and had committed suicide and I actually knew him. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the program for the veterans and for law enforcement officers. In Hillsborough County, we were seeing, this is back in 2014, many, many veterans that were calling us looking for assistance and support. And they would ask folks like me, well, you know, Clara, where did you serve or what theater were you in? And mm -hmm. when I would say, I'm so sorry, I, I've never served, they would thank me and they would hang up. So we recognized we were losing a lot of veterans who were in crisis. And so we worked with the local, state, and um, uh, funding sources to be able to create a veteran support line. And that number is uh, 1-844-MY-FL-VET. It is now available across the state of Florida. And what I'd like to say is the secret sauce of that is that um, line is answered by veterans and oh, it is nice. staffed by veterans. Mm -hmm. So that one veteran who is in trouble is calling another veteran who has had a similar lived experience so they connect immediately. And we um, have been serving veterans since 2014. As I said, it's now a statewide number and we will serve 20 to 25,000 veterans of every year that are mm -hmm. having some sort of um, crisis situation. And again, mm -hmm. it's just a life problem that needs a solution, but some of them are suicidal when they're calling us, some of them are addicted to substances, whatever it is, we're able to assist them and get them to the resources that they need. As a part of this, we also were seeing in the community, unfortunately a couple of years ago, a number of first responders who were taking mm -hmm. their lives by suicide. And we've learned that more first responders die by suicide yes. than in the line of duty. So we really felt that if we could take if we could build something that looks at the success of the veterans program and bring mm -hmm. that to this community, that made a lot of sense. So on September 10th of 2019, we launched 
uh, a, a line. It's a first responder line. It started as an awareness campaign to let the community know that our first responders, while they're the first to respond, they are the last to ask for help. <laughs> and so we wanted to make the community aware of that. And then our second phase was a launch in March of a number, um, and that's one 866 4 hero And that's available to any first responder um, across the state of Florida to be able to call and receive some confidential assistance and support to help them through their time of crisis. Excellent, excellent. And I forgot to uh, mention, I said law enforcement, and I didn't mention my firefighter uh, paramedic brothers and sisters. So, And I know that that is uh, a very, very necessary service. It's incredible. The thing I say as a police officer, you get to see and do things nobody else gets to see and do, but you have to see and do things nobody should have to see or do. And the same thing with uh, with uh, firefighters and, and paramedics, all first responders. So this is a very challenging time for everyone and many people are experiencing fear and anxiety. So what can people do if they are feeling afraid or overwhelmed? I want to say, first of all, that's an absolutely natural emotion mm -hmm. and you should absolutely in, you know, embrace the feelings that you have. When they start to take over your life and you are experiencing physical symptoms or you're becoming so debilitated you can't get out of bed and function, mm -hmm. that's really the time to reach out for additional assistance and support. So before you get to that edge, think about ways that you can reduce your own stress. And we recommend, first of all, no offense, but it may be time to limit your social media <laughs> and limit the media that you're taking in. Yes. I know even in my own house that the news is on 24 seven mm -hmm. and that can heighten an yes. already um, difficult situation. So you may wanna create a schedule for yourself. Routines are the best way that you can deal with anxiety. So if you created a routine that maybe at 11 and six, I'm gonna get my, my COVID update for the day and then shut down. Also, this is a great time to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So find those activities and things that you really enjoy. You know, going outside and taking a walk, getting a little bit of fresh air. Maybe you've always wanted to take a cooking class. You can do that online now mm -hmm. in the comfort of your own home. You can pick up a book, maybe do needlepoint. All of those things, anything that brings you joy and comfort, those are the things we want you to engage in. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to your little people, making sure that you're also encouraging them to do things that make them um, feel better as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and explaining to uh, young kids too, because they're incredibly aware, anyone who Absolutely. has children know that. And so, you know, trying to, to um, either deny or paint you know, a mm -hmm. rosy picture for the young children, uh, just tell them what's going on. It doesn't have to be incredibly graphic and it should be age appropriate, but uh, to include them in that. But that, you Absolutely. know, that is great advice because people, it's, it's uh, you know, the old um, saying, it's like watching a train wreck and it's these <laughs> these 24 hour, you know, exactly. news, it's, it's almost like you're glued to yeah. it. And you get so sucked yes, in. And, and they make it, it's just they one outlet tries to outdo the next outlet to <laughs> You're outdo the next right. outlet, and in uh, quite often not in the business of providing the positive uh, news. Like I saw a photograph today that um, someone had emailed around, and it was a a man and his young son, and they were standing outside saying, "We love you, mom," to a patient that was mm -hmm. in a hospital that they couldn't get in to see. You know those those kind of things that are, are, you know, some of the more heartwarming that we really need to share more often than we do the negative, the, uh, what is it, negative news is already around the world while the truth is putting its pants oh. on. So, <laughs> or a I lie. like that, that's, that's very yeah. good. All right, um, so let's talk about uh, suicide. As you stated mm -hmm. before, it's something that, and most people don't realize that statistic that uh, more police officers die from suicide than they do in the line of duty. And so how do you help people that are dealing with those types of thoughts? As a part of the work that we do, we are a partner with the National um, Suicide Prevention Helpline, and that's 1-800-273-TALK. So if somebody is in Hillsborough County and calls that number looking for help and support, they're actually going to get us at the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay. So first of all, our biggest thing that we do, whether it's a 211 call or a suicide call, we just give people an opportunity just to be heard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to get it all off your chest to somebody who doesn't know you and doesn't judge you and just 
just is there just to listen to you. And so that's the first thing that we do. We will clarify and kind of understand exactly where they're coming from. And then we're going to work on a figure out, okay, where are you in your suicidal thoughts? Are you thinking about it or do you actually have a gun in your hand? Very different responses depending mm -hmm. upon where you are along that scale. Yeah. We may have to um, initiate some life-saving measures. If you're at one end, on the other end, we're gonna start looking at providing some safety planning and what are some things that make you happy? What are some things that can help you stop these negative thoughts that you're having or, or, or help you to recognize them? Mm -hmm. And then what are some things that you can do? And so we will build that plan, we will assess for safety, and then we will work with them to contact them every day or every week, whatever they need until they can get connected to additional resources mm -hmm. and supports. Those calls can take anywhere between a half an hour to an mm -hmm. hour and a half long. Whatever right. somebody needs, we're able to work with them. Mm -hmm. And it probably brings comfort that it's local as it well. Is so local. they're talking to somebody locally. Now, um, how, how do you, how are those lines staffed? Is the majority of it volunteers? We have no volunteers in that. No volunteers? No volunteers. Okay. It is all paid professional staff. Everybody either has a bachelor's degree or is moving towards a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. They're enrolled in some sort of uh, secondary education. They go through almost a semester of training before they take their very first call. Uh, so you can imagine when we're taking calls in excess of between 200 and 250 calls a day, and you don't know what kind of call you're going to get yes. because all of those lines will ring in. Um, it takes a highly strained individual to be mm -hmm. able to do that. Right now with um, the COVID situation that we have, we've got a hybrid. We've got some folks working from home and we've got some folks in office. Mm -hmm. And it requires a lot of additional help and support for the staff, um, as well as con constant updates to make sure that everybody is well connected. Mm -hmm. But again, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we have individuals available on those phones to answer every one of those phone mm -hmm. numbers that we just talked about. Excellent. And one of the things that, that people uh, aren't aware of is uh, the Crisis Center also is a first responder in our community. We you are. have trans care. So uh, let's talk about the role of trans care. So TransCare it uh, partners with Tampa Fire Rescue. So when you call 911 in a medical emergency, because again, there's no bigger crisis than mm -hmm. when you're having a medical emergency, you will go through a series of questions. And depending upon the severity of the medical emergency, you may get responded with TransCare. And so mm -hmm. it is a, we are a 911 ambulance company. We um, have uh, emergency medical technicians that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to provide that medical transport to local area hospitals. We average between 72 and 80 transports every day of citizens, primarily in, in Tampa, that need um, transportation to uh, medical facilities. With this COVID um, emergency that we're in, we've also stepped up some additional transportation. So we're working with the county and the Emergency Operations Center to be able to provide transportation for individuals who are under a quarantine. And oh. ultimately, we'll also be doing that for individuals under isolation. So we'll be able to provide that in a very safe, timely way so that the rest of the community doesn't have to worry about yeah. how those individuals are getting where they need to go. Mm -hmm. We'll be providing that service um, uh, in addition to other community mm -hmm. providers. And that falls into your changing by the hour. You never thought changing. that you would be providing mm -hmm. those services. Ever, ever. Yes. I never thought I'd ever be fitted for an N95 mask. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> Professional growth and development. Right. So let's talk about the um, incredible services that you provide for victims of sexual assault. So 211 is a service that only the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay can provide. The other service that we provide that no one else does is that we're the Community Certified Rape Crisis Center. So when you're raped in Hillsborough County, you don't go to area hospitals, mm -hmm. and right now, thank goodness, yeah. you physically come to our location at Bears in Florida, where you're met by a certified nurse examiner as well as an advocate. And that, t that combination is going to help you through your entire process to move you from being a victim to being a survivor. We perform the rape exam. We also do every bit of testing that needs to be done. So it's a one-stop shop. And then we're able to provide that ongoing help and support for individuals as they move through the legal mm -hmm. process, uh, unless they choose not to. And mm -hmm. if they don't, we're going to continue to support them. Mm -hmm. Last year, we provided 335 rape exams in Hillsborough County. 
Yeah, that's um, a staggering number, isn't it? And we all know they're woefully underreported. Woefully and underreported. And I have, I've seen that um, level of service firsthand, and it really is uh, incredible. It really, the, the, the empathy that is shown and the power that is given mm -hmm. back to the victim through that process is really something uh, to behold. So uh, we can't ignore the fact that this is an incredible... Uh, has an incredible economic impact on so many individuals and so many businesses uh, in our community. So let's talk about what 211 can do for our families and, and with children as well. So I would say, you know, similar to what we've talked about before, is that when folks call us on 211, the first thing we do is just give them an opportunity to be heard, get them to talk about what they're feeling, what they're experiencing. Then we're going to problem solve about, let's talk about the resources that you do mm -hmm. have. Maybe it's your Aunt Mary who is, you know, <laughs> five states away or, or your Uncle Joe or whatever. We're going to talk about and help you think about what are the resources that you have. And then we're going to look at what are the community resources that are available to fit your specific needs. I think what is really nice about 211 is that we're going to give you the right service at the right time mm -hmm. so that you're not having to chase the various resources. One of the things we know is that when a resource guide is printed, it's almost out of date the moment it comes off the press. And particularly in during these tough times where truly resources are changing by the hour, 211 mm -hmm. is really that clearing house to be able to get the right services and supports. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Ruskin and you need food resources, we're gonna connect you to the food banks that are in Ruskin. Mm -hmm. If you're in town and country and you need you need to know what childcare is available for me because I'm an essential service, we're gonna have that information. Mm -hmm. Where do I pick up lunch for my child? We're going to have that information that is up to the day, up to the moment, um, uh, appropriate and, mm -hmm. and correct. Excellent. Now we've talked about a lot of, um, you know, real-time service mm -hmm. provision. How about ongoing uh, therapy provision? Yes. So we provide uh, trauma-focused specific therapy for individuals. We'll serve between five and 700 individuals every year who have experienced some sort of trauma, whether that's physical abuse, maybe sexual abuse, domestic violence, they've witnessed a crime or they've witnessed some sort of uh, traumatic event that's really impacting their lives. So we provide that service in four locations. In this brave new world that we're in, mm -hmm. we are working through teletherapy now and we are providing teletherapy to our patients and um, both existing and any new patients that come in so that we're able to provide that help and support, but we also, for those that really feel that they need it in office, mm -hmm. we're able to safely provide that as well. So a variety of services available across our county. We have four locations touching every aspect of our community. Excellent, excellent. Um, you also have a very interesting service that you provide out at the best airport in the United the States. The best Tampa airport. International Airport. Um, what about that, your Traveler's yeah, Aid? Yeah, so Traveler's Aid is amazing. We touch about 20 to 23,000 passengers a year who are in some sort of crisis. And again, it could be that they've missed their flight and they have a companion animal and they didn't bring enough food to a, a new parent that didn't pack enough diapers, <laughs> you know, to somebody, to a human trafficking situation where we've mm -hmm. been able to assist in that. The beauty of that program is that it's all volunteers, uh, but the average age is about 70. So that was one of the first programs. Unfortunately, yeah. we did have to close down for mm -hmm. the safety of our volunteers and and that came at a mutual decision with the airport as mm -hmm. well so we are still in constant contact with the airport they know how to reach us through 211 if they do have travelers that are stranded or or have some sort of mm -hmm. needs have any needs we can connect them through the through the services that are available there good good you know it is um, when I did my uh, contracting business after I retired for three years I did a great deal of traveling and it it really is amazing the amount of anxiety uh, in a lot of people that that haven't traveled it you know lose a passport or do right right yes. it's um that is a wonderful service so the stressful time for your staff so let's talk about how do you how mm. do you help your staff deal with the challenges and the stress of this new environment uh, we've done a couple of things. I think we mirror what most folks are doing, your, yourself included, about being able to provide daily updates with daily facts, mm -hmm. trying to squash 
urban myths that seem go. to be everywhere. Uh, but at the same time, uh, making sure that every staff gets touched at least every day by their supervisor, particularly the remote staff, um, and then trying to do some fun things. I know you, you're talking about doing some fun things. I'm doing some fun, goofy videos. Tomorrow is, for us, our birthday celebration. So we're going to do something remotely to wish everybody who oh. has an April birthday happy yeah. birthday. I think we have to balance the series of this with also some levity right. as well, yeah. uh, because we don't want folks to become so burnt out that they can't respond then to the needs of the folks that are mm -hmm. reaching out to us. So yeah. it's always a balance and it's right. more art, I think, than science. Yes, isn't that the truth? But you're right, you do have to have that that levity. And I, I love some of the you know social media messages that are coming along. I told everyone that um, all these parents that have to stay home with their kids <laughs> now, I said, teacher appreciation, they're gonna be pulling up with a new car for the teacher. Absolutely. Yes. My brother said he saw something where a, a woman was out scratching the, my child's an exceptional student bumper sticker <laughs> off of that. That's yeah, great. It, it'll be very, very uh, uh, interesting, the appreciation uh, level, no doubt about it. So um, how can we, how can, you know, the, the community, how can we help you at the Crisis Center? You know, I, I think probably any nonprofit that you have in your studio, we all will say financial resources, and certainly we have an incredibly generous community. Mm -hmm. And so, any you know financial resources, our website crisiscenter.com, certainly there. But also, one of the biggest challenges we have is folks still don't know know we exist. Yeah. And so, if your viewing audience could feel comfortable enough to become kind of ambassadors for us, mm -hmm. and when they have family members, friends, neighbors who are struggling. They don't have to take that on themselves. They can tell those individuals, let's call 211 together. Mm -hmm. Call 211. It is available. It is a resource in our community. Again, it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah, and that's an incredible uh, suggestion. You know, we've talked about um, making, in our community, making kindness more contagious mm -hmm. than this virus. And I've asked that you call around, check on your neighbors, uh, do whatever you can. And if you see individuals that are in crisis, don't look the other way. Be that person that helps them out. And you know the the simple three numbers two one one, and have individuals uh, call and get the assistance that they need. And and as Clara said, sometimes it's just a voice on the other end of that phone. Mm -hmm. You know they may be embarrassed to talk about it with you, but to be able to talk to a professional about how they're feeling mm -hmm. could be the difference between life and death. Absolutely, that's really the truth. Absolutely, without a doubt. So now we will go to the question portion of it. And uh, there's a few questions for me in here. That's a big surprise. <laughs> so the first one is, this is from uh, Dale Greenstein from Channel 10. And there's actually a couple of different ones that really deal with the, the same issue. Uh, Jennifer Kay from Bloomberg Law in Miami and uh, Jason Lanning from uh, Bay News 9. and. Uh, one is, what's your response to the governor's amended order, which says the state's order uh, supersedes local orders? And does that mean that Hillsborough County can no longer enforce its more restrictive measures to fight the spread of COVID-19? Um, then one, has the city ordered churches or other places of worship to close or just keep gatherings to 10 people or fewer? And then what's the advice for people that may read the statewide order and want to attend church services this coming weekend? I always talk about this in the simplest form. Our safer at home uh, order that we put out and the stay at home order that the governor has put out. The overarching goal is to flatten this curve, to reduce the number of cases of COVID-19 and to, to stop the spread. And the way that we do that is by staying at home whenever mm -hmm. possible and then distancing staying six feet away at minimum from other individuals. So the governor's order uh, last night and then the amended order today indicated that the state order supersedes all other local orders. So that means that it overrides the Hillsborough County order. But in essence, it's saying the same thing. Stay at home, stay six feet away from each other. Uh, the governor did indicate that uh, uh, religious services were an essential service, but that doesn't mean that churches should be open this Sunday. 
his order was silent on the CDC uh, recommendations of staying six foot apart from each other and limiting any gathering to 10 people or less. So the city of Tampa's interpretation of his order is that we all have to stay six feet apart and no gatherings of more than 10 individuals. And the majority of the, uh, actually all of the uh, religious leaders that I've talked to in our community are all holding services via technology. Most often used is Facebook Live to communicate with their parishioners because it's not just the connection with, with your God, it really is the social community for mm -hmm. so many people. But we also can't lose fact that, or lose um, a focus on the fact that a lot of these congregations are those individuals that are in the high risk categories, the elderly and individuals that have uh, other health concerns. So again, stay at home whenever possible and watch church via Facebook or the service, whatever the service is. All right, um, I think that's it for the questions. What questions do we have coming in? So as we've been on this Facebook Live, the governor just announced that he's suspending foreclosures and evictions oh, for excellent. the next 45 days. Your reaction, both of you. Well, that clearly is hot a, dog a, and hallelujah. I, yeah. I mean, that's that yeah. will. I think that will help to alleviate a lot of stress, certainly right. from individuals that we're hearing from. Yeah, that's one of the things that we brought up yesterday. You know, the first of the month, rents due. Right. But uh, our sheriff in Hillsborough County, Sheriff Chad Cronister, got with uh, the chief circuit judge uh, Figueroa, and um, they suspended uh, evictions here in Hillsborough County uh, last week, I believe. So that really is wonderful because that takes a burden off of so many individuals. Absolutely. You look at those, you know, food and shelter, the first things that you have Absolutely. to, first two things that you have to take care of. So that's great. Any and other questions? Question. Can somebody call 211 to get um, a job opportunities or for um, jobless claims help? We can certainly, if they want to call 211 and kind of talk through whatever struggles that they might be having, we can certainly do that and help them direct. We don't have a, a fast track into the system, but we can certainly help individuals as they're working through the process. Great, and that's all we have. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank and you so yes, much. And for uh, Crisis Center of Tampa Bay is an incredible resource in uh, the Tampa Bay area. And as you heard from Clara, I mean, the, the services, services that they provide are uh, an incredible, incredible service, but also just the myriad of, of things that, that you are, you're there for people in their time of need. Absolutely. And that is so important. I can't imagine how many lives uh, your organization has saved through the years. Well, thank you. So if you know anyone that is in need, anyone that is struggling, just needs somebody to talk to, call 211 and the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay will be there to help you. So thank you all for tuning in today and we'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Mm -hmm.